The Houston Ballet started modestly, but they've grown to international prominence. In 1955, there were a group of Houstonians who decided it was time to not just sit around and wait for the touring ballet companies to come through town, but to go ahead and start Houston's own ballet company. So a group of about 30 or 40 people were the founding members, founding trustees of what was then called, I think, the Houston Foundation for Dance, and for a number of years was simply a school. Uh, though the company did at one point uh, operate sort of as the official ballet company of the Houston Grand Opera. So the students in the school would dance in some of the opera productions. Tatiana Semenova served as the first artistic director. In the early days it was, I, I assume, a, a lot like other small groups. In 1967 they put on a production of Giselle and hired leading dancers from New York to come dance the lead roles and that was sort of the big test. Let's see if we can really pull it off and are we ready to have our own company. Well Nina Popova was brought in as the second director and that was in the early 60s because Semenova the board began to feel was too interested in just a school and they wanted it to develop more into a company. Actually the first two directors of the Houston Ballet were both women who had danced with Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. So they were Russian trained and of course in those days a lot of the dancers in those companies were Russian and if they weren't Russian they had changed their names to make it sound like they were Russian. The ballet started performances at Jones Hall. In the winter of 1969 in February they started the professional company, hired a group of I think 16 or 17 dancers. The first performances were in Huntsville, Texas and in May of that year they made their debut at Jones Hall in Houston. So the Houston Ballet was then in existence as a real professional company. Jones Hall was a shared venue, which proved challenging. When Jones Hall was built in the early 60s, it was built like a lot of municipal theaters in, around the country. Let's do one new big multi-purpose theater and all the arts organizations can share it and it'll work for everybody. And of course what we've actually learned is that it that those kinds of theaters haven't worked very well for anybody because they tried to be everything to everybody. In those days, we would literally sit in a room, all the organizations represented it, and fight it out who would get what weekends. You had to call the uh, Civic Center office to book that day three years in advance each day. Touring opportunities helped fill out the performance schedule. In the early days, the company toured a fair amount. Uh, a lot of it regional touring, but toured a fair amount in order to have enough work to keep a group of dancers together. The ballet put on a variety of productions, even in its early years as a company. When the company first started, they were doing mixed rep programs and short ballets. They did a number of Balanchine ballets in the early years. In 1972, I think, so it was only the third or fourth year of the company, they did the first full-length ballet and it was Nutcracker. Classical ballets could really take a physical toll on the dancers. Uh, Sleeping Beauty, for example, has an awful lot of individual roles, and it's it's four acts. It's a prologue through Act Three. Uh, and I remember uh, touring Sleeping Beauty with with um, maybe in a larger company you would do one or two roles in a night, but in the smaller company you did six or eight. And I remember going down to the stage and every dancer had a, a whole string of costumes over their shoulder for quick changes throughout the act. Ben Stevenson became artistic director in 1976, a position he held for 27 years. Was known as a teacher, you know, a really great teacher and coach. So that also uh, made him perfect to take this small regional company and really build it from the ground up. Very funny, tried to um, get the best out of you, pull, pull things you didn't think you had as far as uh, character development because, you know, dance is very difficult and so often you just shut off in your personality and technique takes over. So he was able to pull those kinds of things out to reach an audience member that was more human. Stevenson had a clear vision for the company. 
part of Ben's uh, master plan, his strategy was to establish a, a firm foundation in the classics because not only does it uh, show that the company can do these works, uh, they are the most excellent training for the dancers to do four acts of Sleeping Beauty. You get put through the mill. So Sleeping Beauty and Giselle and the Nutcracker and Coppelia, uh, Ben knew that we had to have these established in the rep if we wanted this to be a serious professional company. And so we concentrated on those. Uh, at the, in the meantime, adding mixed bills with smaller one acts, his choreography and other great choreographers uh, you know, around the world. In 1987, the Wortham Center became the new home of the ballet and grand opera. When the Wortham opened in 1987, we were able to do much larger productions. The Wortham has been, uh, you know, answer to a prayer. I mean, literally, we, we leapfrog with the Houston Grand Opera, and we're in, then they're in, and we're in throughout the season. Which, of course, then enabled us to be in the theater for five or six weeks in a row, as opposed to a week here and a week there. The ballet's academy trains a number of promising dancers. Well, our academy has about 300 students. We have students from age four through about 19. We have a summer session that lasts six weeks, and we audition around the country and internationally for students to come to the summer session. And that's when you find the students from all around the world who are interested in being professional dancers. And they usually will come to our summer session for two or three years, and then when they're 15 or so, they come and they spend the last two or three years of their training and what, the, what are the last two or three years of high school here trained to be professional dancers. Well, with each generation, the talent just uh, escalates. So especially with the men, I'd say, I'd see an increase in ability. Because for so long it's been the ballerina that was always the one that was highlighted, but I feel like our men are, are just incredible um, dancers. They're, they're athletic, they, they have beautiful line, and um, are strong <laughs> and can do the dancing as well as the partnering and what's asked of them is pretty amazing. Students audition for highly coveted places in the company. There's that one spot, and everyone's vying for that one spot. And there, actually, there are quite a few. I think there are six positions that are available at one, one year, from year to year. So everyone in the academy is stressed <laughs> about getting that one spot or that chance to join a company and to practice what they've you know, been training for for years. It is a lifestyle. Um, one in which you're completely dedicated to your art form, but very enriching. And here was the great chance for me to do that, and I have.